How many know that when we obey him, that there's a hedge of protection around us, there's some grace, there's his mercy, there's his kindness, and that when we're rebelling against him, uh, we get outside of the fence of protection. And so literally, the first level of the Lord's judgment is just to stop protecting you and let you have what you're asking for. <laughs> this whole world's getting ready to get what it's asking for. I'm serious. He he doesn't listen. He can send the Chaldeans. He, the stuff can be sent if you refuse to yield. And if you read the if you read the Old Testament, which is there, and I'm, it's the whole book anyway. But if you read what happened to Israel, and the Bible says they're an example for us. If you're a King Jameser, it's in sample. <laughs> but they're an example. So what happened to them? He, he makes covenant with them. He blesses them. He pulls them out. He said, this is what you do if you want to be blessed. This is what you do if you want to be cursed. He says, I put before you life and death. Choose life. He didn't cause the fall. Are, are you glad he came to redeem us? But the fall happens, so the circumstance is here. So he says, uh, if you, if I'm going to pick a people to bring a Messiah out of and to pick the one that is the Savior of the world out of, and I'm going to show them how to behave so the world can see what happens to a people that will obey me. And do you know when they did, they were undefeatable. Could not be touched. But even as with Adam and Eve, if you if you really start looking and you look at the times that God has to judge, how many of you know he's got to judge? Listen to me, he's got he has to judge because he's just. The issue is, what side of the judgment are we going? Are we going to be judged according to Yeshua, Jesus, and our agreement with him and, and by grace aligning with him? Or are we going to be judged on our own works? So if I want to, if I want to be a rebellion in rebellion and I want to be defiant, he'll let me. And the first stage of, of his forced judgment, and I say forced because we force it, of the judgment in which he judges us according to us, the first stage is letting us dance with the devil that we're wanting to play with. And that one that comes along very charming and wants to dance with you, he's really wanting to stomp your toes and bruise your heel. But he's merciful and kind. And see, even at the fall, Adam and Eve, she was deceived. He went along with his wife. He created the problem. He, he might have could have been her redeemer. <laughs> Think about it. Because Yeshua is called the last Adam. Because he came and did what the first Adam failed to do. So, but because of the fall... We, we have this problem. And, and yet, if they'd have stayed in the Garden of Eden as fallen beings, they would have eaten from the tree of life and lived in a fallen state forever. How many know it was mercy that kicked them out of the garden? How many know in that sense, death is mercy? And though death is the enemy, it's also, as Sister alluded to the other day, God, God he, he, he celebrates that when those come home to him. All of heaven celebrates the death of saints. Why? Because they made it. <laughs> uh, everybody say, I'm going to make it by the grace of the Lord. So our world is getting so deep and so dark. And Isaiah said it's so dark that, that he said it's great darkness on the earth and great darkness in the people. The reason there's great darkness in the earth is because of the dominion of man and because man wants to play with darkness, the whole earth is dark and the, and the all of creation groans for the revelation of the sons of God. 
Now, part of that revelation is the kingdom of God is at hand. It's us being cleansed, living for God, doing our best, walking in his grace, forgiving people, repenting quickly, having mercy, kindness, grace, doing what we need to do, praying against darkness, fighting our enemy. That is the kingdom of God is at hand now. But one day the saints will be re resurrected. One day there'll be a resurrection and the incorrupt, the corruptible will become incorruptible. And that revelation of the sons of God, when the Lord is here with us, listen, then things change completely. And we are soldiering on now. And I'm, I'm here to tell you that we got, it, it can't be, it's not a game. It's life and death. And we got a merciful God. But see, in all that darkness I just described, what do you think happens if the Lord doesn't judge it? There's no more mankind left. The technology changing humans into beings that aren't humans anymore. Okay? The wars and rumors of war, the wars that are coming, people, I mean, you wouldn't want to be alive in Ukraine. I mean, you better, better be alive than dead, but you wouldn't want to be, you wouldn't want to be living in Ukraine today or on the border of Gaza, or be in Gaza, or anywhere else all over the world where people are fighting and people are going to hell, and lives are destroyed, and children are killed, and all the terrible things that are happening. So in the mercy of the Lord, one day, he's going to fix it. In the meantime, he's long-suffering that no man should perish. How many can say amen to that? Amen? So we praise the Lord for his goodness and his kindness and his grace. And thank you, Lord, that he gives, has given us an opportunity to, to come into the grace of the Lord through faith in the, our Savior. And to say, Lord, I'm a sinner. And I need to be saved. Lots of people are told that they need Jesus and never told not why. I mean, I said it the other day, the number one reason that you need to, you need, you need to get saved you're getting saved from hell, heaven, hell, with God, without God. I don't want to go to hell. I don't want anybody to go to hell. As the man said, number one reason I got saved, I didn't want to go to hell. That's good. Because, see, if you don't know what you're saved for, you don't know the reason you're saved. Saved from sin, the results of sin, your own sin, your ancestors, all the mess. Number two reason is saved unto good works so that we can do things here for the Lord and shine for him. Get free, walk in freedom, forgive quickly, repent quickly, and live. And even have joy and not be vexed. You don't have to like what you see going around you, but if you can't have joy for the moment you're in, then the enemy has stole your strength. Amen? How many want the Lord to do some things today? Amen. We're going to do things just a little bit different in that we've had different ministers have ministered uh, each day this week, uh, this weekend in this camp. And and I just uh, the Lord is going to... Um, we're going to have a little tag team event. It's going to be much better than a wrestling tag team. Except for we're going to wrestle against powers and principalities and dark. It's much better. See, we're going to wrestle. It's just we're going to wrestle the real enemy. Amen. And, and I'm, I'm going to ask, we're going to have uh, each member of those that have ministered here from the pulpit are going to going to be allowed a, a segment of time to just come share with you what the Lord has given them on their heart this morning. Amen? So with that, I'm going to ask the Quita to come first. You get to kick off, daughter. Amen? Amen? So thank you, Lord. Let me pray before we start. Oh, listen, all of you, uh, Charles, Jesse, come up here, please. Sister Deborah. Listen, we can't do any of this through this alone. Thank you. 
Well, praise the Lord. This was a surprise for us too. So we're ready in season and out of season. Amen. So we're supposed to be. And so at first, of course, we you go, oh, no, I haven't prepared anything. But you know what? We have the Holy Spirit. He always prepares within us what he wants us to speak. A subject, you know, came immediately to mind. I just kind of pondered on a little bit. And then I just, I, I knew that that's what the Holy Spirit was talking to me about. Part of it is I wanted to talk about how powerful the word of God is. We know that the Bible says that it's sharper than any two-edged sword. It won't return void. It will go and establish what it is sent to do. Hello, it will can, wash can you, you hear me? It will heal you. It will cleanse you. It will deliver you. But if you don't partake of it, you're going to be struggling. It's a lamp unto your feet, a light unto your path. If you do not have light on your feet to light your path, you're not going to have direction. And we must have direction, and God will give us discernment through the word. You can't discern what's coming at you in uh, the battle without having the word of God. And there's so many people that you'll say, well, are you reading the word of God every day? Well, no, I'm really not. Well, we're all going to be, you know, we need to live by this word, number one, but we are also, also are going to be judged by it. And we need to know what it says because we have it available to us and just I didn't know is not going to work, but to, to, in order to go forward, to maintain your deliverance and to walk out with all the wonderful things that's happened to you this weekend, you're going to need the word and you need to partake of it daily. Even if you have a hard time understanding it in the ministry that, uh, I have a honor of being, uh, a member of we, when we serve people in ministry, we talk to them about the word. We tell them to read it out loud. Read it anyway if you don't understand it. Ask the Holy Spirit to give you an understanding of his word. And then you read it out. When you read it out loud, you're speaking it, hearing it, you're reading it all at the same time. So you're getting a trifecta of that. But I wanted to go to two uh, parts in the Bible that will help you going forward from uh, being, you know, delivered and having uh, a great many miracles done this weekend inside of you. Um, and I tell you, it just keeps getting better and better. The more you're peeled like an onion, the more you take the land back little by little. It is just amazing when the fruit all starts coming forth from being delivered. And you'll go and you yourself will be amazed and you'll get in a situation and you yourself will go, oh, wow, I didn't respond like I normally did. And you don't even realize how bound you are growing up until you start to get delivered and you get the freedom and you think, oh, my goodness. I was so bound for the majority of my life. So I give glory and praise to God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit who sets us free because we get free indeed. And I encourage people to come every single time because the more you come, the more you'll be free and the more you'll be changed. But I wanted to talk a little bit about um, <clears throat> Second Peter chapter 1. And this is something that uh, God showed me uh, some time back. But it has stuck in my spirit as something that's really important. And I can say I have walked in this, but there are times when I got away from it and I feel the effects of it, okay? I totally feel the effects. But um, I want to start, I think I want to start in verse 4. That's Second Peter chapter 1, verse 4. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence. So we're supposed to give all diligence to these things. Add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity, which means love. Four. And this is what struck me. We hear those scriptures a lot, but this is what really hit me. Like sometimes you'll read something you've read before and then all of a sudden it's like a boom or a mic drop and you're like, oh, here it is. Verse eight says, for if these things be in you and abound, it's saying if that means we have to do it right. But if these things be in you and abound, they make you 
that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We will not be barren in the knowledge of him. And we will, it'll be, it'll bring fruit of Jesus Christ in you. That's going to help bring the fruit forth that we, that's in Galatians five, you're going to walk in the fruit. And then it says, um, but he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see. So therefore having the word and then not adding to, like it says here, you're going to be navigating life spiritually blind. And that's when the enemy can get the foothold. And that's when you can get torn down in every area of your life. If you're not diligent to add to these things. And it says, um, he that lacketh, lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather brethren give diligence to make your calling and election sure. So when I started coming back to this scripture, uh, you know, at the end of this year, I started praying and asking God to, to help me to, to know my calling, that my calling and election would be sure. And I said, Lord, anything that I'm involved in in my life, if it's not in your plan or it has, wasn't something you wrote in my book before the foundation of the earth, I want you to remove it. But I want to walk in what you wrote in my book of destiny. And so he started showing me some things that have been there since I was a child, but I'd kind of gotten away from doing that part of ministry. And, and I was really grateful that he kind of led me back to what was originally in my heart from a really young age. And that's, that's like, praise the Lord. Y'all, it's never too late. It's never too late. Make your calling and election sure. And then this is here, here, listen to this. If you do these things, you shall never fall. They'll never fall because you know what? You're not going to stumble. You're not blind. You have eyes. You have spiritual eyes that are seen. If you walk around blind, you're having to grope for things. You're, ha you're going to stumble over things because you can't see them. But it's saying that you won't fall, but your eyes, your spiritual eyes are going to be wide open and you're not going to fall. And it says in this next one is powerful too. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, you know, because you can see the entrance, you know, because your spiritual eyes are open. And then uh, I like the next two scriptures because it's he's, he's literally saying in this, uh, Peter's saying, I, I'm just going to always remind you of this. I'm going to make sure that this truth is established in you. And I'm going to be diligent to keep reminding you of this. And so I started, when I read those, I started saying, you know what? I'm going to put myself in remembrance of this. I'm going to put my friends that I love and my family in remembrance. And I'm going to, I'm going to always remind them uh, and put them in remembrance of these things that God has a calling and a purpose on their life and the enemies, the thief that comes to still kill and destroy. And if we will do these things, we were going to, we're going to finish that race with endurance and we're going to walk the way that God called us to walk and the enemy's taken too much ground. And so I, I'm just, I have a new zeal for taking the ground back that he has taken from me because I allowed it not knowing growing up, you know, that this was a tax from the enemy. I just felt like this is how life was. And this is who I was, but that's not, I am free in Jesus Christ. So the other, the other passage I want to go to is, um, let me find that. Give me just a second here. Is Philippians four. This is one. This is kind of a roadmap to help you navigate uh, your deliverance. And um, Sister Deborah talked about the eight R's. The first thing we have to do in the eight R's is recognize. And that was really powerful about recognition. We have to recognize when the enemy is coming against us to come out of agreement. We get in agreement to have deliverance, but we come out of agreement when they try to, we don't, I don't agree with you, get away from me. But we have to have the battle in the mind. Uh, that's where it starts. And we have to take all and every thought captive so we can bring it to the obedience of the word. That's why the word will wash your mind. You get transformed by the renewing of your mind through the word. And so um, I'm going to start. It's Philippians 4, verse 4. 
Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. Careful means anxious, which we know anxiety is a spirit. And when we get that, we're in fear. We're not, in, we're in unbelief and we are not believing, but be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. And there is a whole lot of power in, in waking up, thanking God. I don't care if you've got horrible things going, whatever you have good in your life, if you will start thanking the Lord for it, you're going to be set free from depression, self-pity, any of all the demons that try to come with trials and tribulation. And the oil of joy is your strength. And that's so you, you ask for the oil of joy. You praise because praise takes down the enemy. But Thanksgiving is a powerful weapon of coming out of some of these things that God has done. I started turning my thinking around and, you know, circumstances may not be what I plan them to be, but I started thanking him for what I have to be thankful for. And it is, you will find how powerful that is. So with Thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your what? Hearts and minds. You know, your mind is where the battle is. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The mind is attacked from the enemy. So it'll keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. These things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, the, and the God of peace shall be with you. So this, this passage in Philippians 4 is about the peace of God. It's a weapon of thanksgiving. It, that alone will take down the enemy. And then adding to in this other one, it keeps you on the right path. Because we so often can be deceived in the wrong path. We can have um, any situation that will you can even get distracted and get distracted from more than one, one direction. And then you're not looking this way while you're distracted here and this can snare you you have to ask god to have like peripheral vision around everything to help you to be alert to all the wiles of the enemy which you know this is part of the armor of god and this is um and i was telling crystal earlier today that my mother and father gave us uh, at the breakfast table every day, we got the word of God and we got prayer every single day. And then we we had, you know, times in the house where we had the word served up to us. And um, my father died when I was 11. My mother continued that. Now we knew we were eating the word in the morning with breakfast and we would have prayer. But I think I was in my... 40s and my mom two years before she died she told me she said I clothed you kids in the armor of God every day and I, I said you did what and she said I clothed you in the armor of God I said I have never heard that before I said what a gift you were who does that and she said, well, I would watch y'all walk two houses down to the bus stop. And she says, I'm a widow with three kids at this point. And I needed the Lord to look after my children. So I would dress each one of you as you're walking and I'm watching. And she said, and then I would ask, the, I pray the blood of Jesus. And I would ask the Holy Spirit to surround you like a bubble of protection. And I was so grateful that God gifted me with a mother like this. And I said, mom, the Bible says to put on the full armor of God. I never, ever, ever thought for a second anything about clothing, some putting it on somebody else. She goes, who fed you and clothed you when you were a baby? Physically, I did. And it's my job to clothe you and to feed you spiritually. And she said a very impactful statement. She said, People feed and clothe their children physically and send them out into this world. Now, this world wasn't near what this world is back then. 
But she said, they send them out there, but they don't feed and clothe them spiritually. And I was bowled away. It actually, I went home in tears and grateful to have a mother that was like that. But, uh, you know, a couple of weeks later, she called me and said, they want me to speak at the women's ministry. And I have no idea what to speak this month. And I go, well, I'll tell you what you need to speak. I said, everybody who's given birth needs to hear to dress and clothe their, their children spiritually and physically. And then when they grow up, they'll learn how to feed and clothe themselves by the word, eating the word, wearing the word. It's part of your armor and wearing the whole armor of God, because that's the only way we can come against all the wiles of the enemy. And that's all I have. <laughs> Good morning. <clears throat> yeah. Um, what a what a wonderful weekend I've had here being able to minister and and um, just what a blessed time it's been uh, ministering with y'all and uh, getting to uh, just spread the love of Jesus to everyone and um, getting to sit in on and um, do deliverances and stuff is so good. Um, I love giving back to what God has freely given me and he has set me free. So I love doing the work of the Lord. And uh, as I learn and grow, um, it's just awesome to learn uh, in wisdom and understanding and learning discernment and uh the enemy is tricky he is divisive he is sneaky he's charming and he's clever and um thank god that we uh we uh, have um people that um help teach us and, and help help learn us up and praise god of that and thank god that i'm allowed to help y'all as well um learn what the lord has shown me and and things in life and so i was sitting there today and um you know after getting asked to come up here and i thought you know god um what is a message that, you know, you, you know, that you want to place on me? And I thought, well, I mean, we're in the last year of 2023 and we're going into 2024. And, and this was a blessed year for me. And, uh, and I, and I pray that it was blessed for you and uh, coming up uh, in the year 24, you know, as long we need us, God's our provider. He's the one who strengthens us. As we look around at the world, we can see a world that is decaying and falling apart and wicked and nasty. And it is, getting more evil by the second out there. I mean, what they're allowing into schools and phones, everything that you watch entertainment wise, it is more wicked. Satan is being exposed. I mean, he's just being um, praised like normal now. It's everywhere from, from your football games to your cartoon shows. He's in witchcraft. He's everywhere. It's prominent, rapid running through the internet waves and television. And, and that's just what we can see with the naked eye. In a spiritual sense, it's thousands of times worse than this, you know, but the, the beautiful thing is God is the author and finisher of our salvation. And he is the author of this world. And he goes before us and beside, behind us and beside us, protecting us. But we have to know his word and have to have an understanding of who he is. And we also have to have an understanding who the enemy is because he is cunning and he comes as an angel of light and he tricks. And even the elect can be deceived if he doesn't know. And that's where I think we're at and now in, in, in coming up is coming to a great deception upon the land. Uh, you see it in the church happening. It's not, it used to be in the bars and in the gutters, but now it's in the church just as much. It's deception. It's, it's, um, it's, it's a movement that isn't the Holy Spirit movement. It's different spirits that are masquerading using Jesus. So first off, I'm going to go to the scripture of, of so we have some understanding because that's where we want to have is an understanding of who our Lord and Savior is, because he gives us understanding. So I'm going to be going to um, Proverbs, Proverbs 3 and uh, 19. And it says in Proverbs 3, 19, it says, The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. By his knowledge, the depths were broken up. The clouds dropped down, the dew. My son, let them not depart from your eyes. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. So they will be life to your soul and grace to your neck. Then you will walk safely in your way and your foot will not stumble. When you lie down, you will not be afraid. Yes, you will lie down and you will sleep and your sleep will be sweet. Do not be afraid of the sudden terror, nor the troubles from the wicked when it comes. For the Lord will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught. 
Do not withhold good from those whom it is due and when it is in your power to do so. And this proverb is so beautiful because it shows us that wickedness is coming. It's there. But God and the understanding of who Jesus is will keep your foot from stumbling. He will stop you from falling prey to the enemy when the enemy comes. We have to have discernment in all spiritual things on what to do. We have to have this. We need to go to God before every decision we make. We need to pray over our household because our wives and children are in, are in subject to what we know and, and what our covering is. We cannot have holes in our covering. We cannot allow the little sin to have holes in our umbrella where demons leak in and wickedness leaks in. We must fast. We must pray. We have to make this year a year of fasting and prayer and interceding for, for our families and for the church. We need to intercede for the, for the whole body of Christ that is being deceived right now in many ways. We need to ask that this be a year of exposure for people that are teaching doctrines of demons and false teaching. We want the Lord to show us the truth in his word. So all witches and wizards and, and all new age practices and all demonic things that are masquerading around as angels of light in the church, be exposed. Pay attention to what you read. Pay attention to what the Holy Spirit puts on your heart. For the enemy has no power like the power of God. The power of God is what covers us. He's the one that protects us. We're toast without him. Without walking in the Holy Spirit, walking with the authority of Jesus, we, we can't make it. We have to lean on God. We have to submit to God and pay attention to, to his teaching. And the beautiful thing is, and just what, what I'm doing this year, and this is just some advice, I'm digging into the word of God. You know, I've listened, I, I love sermons, I love teachers, but this is going to be a year for me to study the truth of God out and to study the stories out. You know, we're all in different seasons, but I want to know, you know, what happened to Israel? <laughs> I mean, I know a little bit, but do I know the whole story? What happened in all to all the Old Testament? Why were they blessed? Why were they cursed? There, there's, there's every word is, is from God in this book. And there's meaning in every story. And every story in this book, there's meaning. And I, this year, I want to I wanna study them out. I, I want to know how to walk in the authority that God has given me how to be the man that God has created me to be so I can win the souls that he puts in front of me, how to, how to um, drop the sin that has held me back for many years. Because it's, it's, you know, sin is sin, and, and it's the gossip that'll tear you down. It's the getting involved in conversations with guys that aren't saved when you should be standing up and saying, or just maybe walking off at times. It's allowing to entertain the devil when we know to leave. And the more that we entertain that and don't walk off or get involved in gossip, slander, which seems meaningless at times, it draws us away from the presence of God. We need to act on the conviction of the Holy Spirit. When the Lord tells us to speak, we need to speak. And when he tells us to hold our peace, we need to hold our peace. We need to move when he tells us to move and stay where he tells us to stay. And so that's where I was coming with the understanding of the Lord, as the more that we understand the Lord and the more we study him out, the more that we hear from the Holy Spirit, the more, it is the, Holy, the more that it is the Spirit of God that is leading us. And when we are being led by, the, by God, we have nothing to worry about. We're going to prosper in our way. Don't, don't get me wrong. We will face trials and tribulations. The enemy will attack us probably more than ever when we're doing this. But once again, our feet will not stumble. Because we have an understanding and a faith in God. And when you do stumble, you repent and ask for forgiveness. And you learn. And we learn. So I'm going to go to one more scripture here. And it's going to be in 1 uh, first, first Corinthians. And I'm going to start at 2.6. And in 1 uh, Corinthians 2.6, it says, However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. And that is the world that we're living in. The rulers of this age are coming to nothing. This world is spiral or it is going to nothing. We are on a movement of destruction until God comes back. It, it, is, it is not getting going to get better. It's just not, you know, the, the Bible doesn't tell us it's going to do that until the end when Jesus comes back and all things are made 
new and we have the new Jerusalem. But right now we live in a time that we must protect our children and, 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 and really pay attention to the loved ones that are lost because right now is a perfect time. I mean, 2000 years ago, Jesus said that we were in the last hour. So, I mean, we're 2000 years into the last hour. So I don't know exactly how that works. I mean, that's God's timing. You know, I know that one day is 1000, 1000, one day, you know, so I know we're getting a lot closer than we were 2000 years ago. So we're probably, you know, anytime Jesus can come back and anytime the judgment of the Lord will be laid upon us. So we want to have our loved ones in right standing with God. And only the, the, the main way we can do that, we have to have ourselves in right standing with God to be able to feed them. It says, but we speak the wisdom of God in a, in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew, for they had not known who had not known have crucified or they would have not crucified the Lord of glory. But it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. And all through scripture, we have this beautiful security in the Lord. Our eyes have not seen, our ears have not heard. We have not tasted the goodness that God has prepared for us. So anytime that we're going through things and we've got a struggling child or a, a, a spouse that might be struggling, intercession and prayer, the power of, of God is, is unmovable. He will set you free completely. He will restore you to do his will. He will do this for the selfless person that wants to seek his face and do his will. He knows who he's setting free, and he knows when he's setting them free to do his will. It says, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all things, yet the depths, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? It is the Holy Spirit which gives us the understanding. It's the Holy Spirit that we must lean on in this coming year. We, this needs to be a year for us to, to, to dig in to what the Holy Spirit wants to speak to us. We're all unique. We all have our own purpose, calling, and life. Some of us are, are meant to get up in front of people and preach. Some of us are meant to preach at work, to tell at work. I mean, I, I, I love the ministry field at the workplace. You know, it's, 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 it's a blessing to, to help those people. They're lost. And it's a, help, it's a blessing to show the love of Jesus. Even when they reject you uh, in a bit, you pray for them. You know, and, and, and first and foremost, our ministry field needs to be at home and amongst our home. Our house needs to be a house that serves the Lord. Understand what, and understanding and spiritual warfare things, when you go home, you want to, there's things in all of our homes that God wants us to remove. Some of them, you know. We have things that are cursed objects in homes that God doesn't want in there. There's things on the TV that don't need to be on the TV. We're entertaining. Some people are entertaining things in their home they don't need to be entertaining. And what's that doing right there? It's holes in your umbrella. Now you've got leaks. You've got cracked open doors for the enemy to come in. And that's where the end. And, and, and we're accountable for what we know. And that's where our under, understanding becomes so beautiful. Because the more understanding we have, the more knowledge we have, the more we can walk in the Lord, but the more we're held accountable for what we know. If I know what's coming on the TV is garbage and it shouldn't be playing on the TV and I allow it to be played there, the devil's going to fully attack not just me, my children, my home. I mean, everything, my finances, everything. That's an open door there for the enemy to get in and work. And it's because of disobeying the Lord. So we should pray and ask God to, uh, to reveal to us his understanding on, on what we need to do there. And uh, anyways, I'm going to go on. It says, but God has revealed to us through his spirit, for the spirit searches all things, yes, the depth things of God. For what man knows these things except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Now we have, not re now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit of God of who is from God, that we might know the things that we have been freely giving to us by God. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but what the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. But the, mat the natural man does not receive these things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual judges all things. 
yet himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord but he that instructed him? But we have the mind of Christ. And what a beautiful thing that is. But we have the mind of Christ. Watch out for the person that, that goes against spiritual warfare things and deliverance. Because they have not received the mind of Christ. Because this book is a spiritual warfare book. This book is instructions how to live your life in a spiritual realm as in a physical realm. We need to, if you're, if, you're, if you're paying attention and learning from people, make sure that they're teaching you how to war the enemy. Make sure that you're in a spot that is, praise God, if they're preaching about Jesus, make sure they're preaching about what Jesus does. Jesus cast out demons. He healed the sick. He cleansed the leper. Jesus loved the sinner. He had compassion. He washed feet. He wasn't, Jesus wasn't about building up a business. Jesus wasn't, he wasn't about that. He was about building up a kingdom of servants that serve him, a people with a pure heart, with love in their heart. He had compassion on the dying people. He prayed for the people that crucified him. He forgave them. Jesus was something that we just, we strive to be. Make sure when you're, you know, in this year, as, as you, we're all trying to grow close to God and we're all trying to feed ourselves and get fed, make sure you're paying attention to who's feeding you. You can make a beautiful meal and put food poison in it. Food poison, you can't see it until it's affecting you. It's invisible. Make sure that we pay attention to what we're doing. And then I'm going to go on because I was praying today and I asked God, you know, you know, where, 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 what, you know, what is to come? You know, I mean, we, we have a future. We're living in a world and, and we're trying to do the will of God. We all know that, that it's unraveling and, you know, someday we'll come to, come to a, a, the final Armageddon, you know, the, the folding place. And I come and I got led to the scripture and it's in, uh, it's in revelations four. It's going to be in revelations, uh, four, four. And I, well, I said one of the first times I ever studied it out, and I thought hmm, this it was it felt really good to me when I read it this morning. I said actually Revelations, I'm gonna be reading Revelations 4, 8 through 11. And this is about a submission of God right here. This this is a total submission of God and what the beauty of the Lord Jesus is, and just and 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 when the the new the new Jerusalem and the and the new heaven to come and what we see in Revelation, it is beautiful. It says right here, it says, the four living creatures, each having six wings full of eyes around with them, and they do not rest day and night. And these are creatures of God watching this. This is what we're being, you know, the, the eyes of the Lord upon us. They claim, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Wherever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, amen, forever and ever. And then I see this beautiful thing right here. The 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory, honor, and power for you created all things. And by you, were, and by you, your will, they exist and were created. And what a beautiful thing that is, that seeing the elders, the most, the most, recognize people in the kingdom of heaven throw down their crowns and fall at the feet of jesus and this what a beautiful thing and i thought got it maybe i was looking at the, you know we're coming into the year 24 and you know you got 24 elders here right and there's significance in numbers in the bible i was reading in the old testament you have 24 elders as well but i didn't get to do the study it out but what what, what a thing it is here for the 24 elders that throw their crowns down and lay at the feet of the Lord and worship him. And that's how we should be. We're, we're kings and priests. We, we have crowns of glory. There'll become a time where we throw our, throw our crowns down and bow before the Lord and every knee bow. And we'll praise God. And that's where our faith is. As we strive for the day that we get to come into the presence of the Lord that is unseen and see the Lord that's there. And we get to take our spirit and our, 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 our crowns of glory with, with, with the beauty that God has given us, and we throw it before our majesty and king, and we lay down and praise him. And that's where our faith stands, and that's what we strive for. And, that's, and, and, and there's no more pain. There's no more sin. There's no more hurt. There's no more wickedness. And we are in a place of complete awe in the presence of the God, our God, our majesty. 
And that's what I was reading this morning. And I thought, man, what a beautiful time that's going to be when we get to lay down at the feet of God and worship him truly. So that's what I've got today. I praise God for y'all. I thank y'all. I encourage y'all to seek the Lord and, and seek discernment in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woohoo. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. Yes. Thank you, Lord. What a blessing this weekend has been, right, y'all? Thank you, Lord, for everything you're doing in our lives and that you're going to continue to do. And uh, Laquita and Charles were right on the same thing, basically, that I'm going on, too. It's all intertwining here and coming together. And um, I just feel um, I feel thankful, like Sis was saying. I feel thanksgiving. I feel grateful. I want to think on heavenly things, holy things, right? I want, uh, we have a renewed mind. I was thinking too, honey, I don't mean to put you out on the spot, but y'all, y'all want to know something. Um, he just learned how to read basically when he was in prison. I'm not even kidding you guys. Yeah. And he's, uh, yeah. Right. <laughs> you would never know that. You would never know that. Right. He just, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's what God does. He renews you. He renews our mind. You know, it's a beautiful thing. It's such a beautiful thing, uh, what he does. And he did the same thing for me. He renewed my mind and, um, I'm full of, of love and joy and peace and kindness and the fruits of the spirit. Hallelujah. And I'm willing to allow the gifts of the Holy spirit to operate through me as well. Amen. Isn't God good. He's so good. He's so faithful. Yes. He is worthy of our praise. I can't wait for that day too to also get to to cast the the crown before our Lord and Savior and you know and that's what I tell everybody I minister to we're in a war y'all until we get to heaven every day is a war like Randy says it's a good day to war right every day is a good day to war we just might as well embrace it now and know that we're warriors that we're in a battle and we've got to fight every day right we let's just take it on in the full armor of God right we put it on and sometimes we're in seasons where we're working on the salvation, right? The helmet. Then we get to where we're working on the truth. Like hubby said, he's doing the word this year, you know? And then what I'm doing this year is um, praying more. I want to, I want to do, I feel called this year to go into deeper intercession, like never before more fasting, more praying, you know, because the Bible says for us to bear each other's burdens, doesn't it? Right. And we need to pray for one another. We need each other, y'all. We need each other. We need to pray. And then I start to think about prayer. There, prayer is awesome. There's like so many facets to it because first of all, you're denying yourself, right? You're choosing to be with the Lord. And if you fast and pray, you're denying yourself even more. You're choosing to pray and to be with the Lord instead of doing what you have to do throughout the day, right? Right. right? You're putting that first. Okay, then you get to spend time with the holy of holies, right? With our Lord, with our Savior, right? We get intimacy, right? We get relationship in prayer, right? We get that time. We get refreshed. We get revived. We're in the secret place. If, if Where do you want to go in this world? Where can you go to be with God in this world, world on this earth? The secret place. The secret place. Where's your secret place? Okay, do you have a secret place? If you don't, you need to get one, right? Amen. Could be your closet, your bathtub, you know, uh, outside in the wilderness. I like all those places, you know, wherever, uh, if you're at work, pray while you're working. I used to clean and I, when I was, I was a housekeeper and I would clean and I would listen to sermons. I would pray. I would worship while I worked. Oftentimes I tell people too, when we're learning how to take uh, thoughts captive, right? We'll share your thoughts with God, right? If we share our thoughts with God, it's easier to take thoughts captive because we're thinking and we're being in communion with God in our own thoughts, you know? So we begin to have that conversation in our thoughts with the Lord. Amen. And that helps us to have pure, think on things pure and holy and whatsoever things are true and just and righteous, right? And we break the power of the enemy in Jesus name and we bind every demon in the name of Jesus, right? In Jesus' name, and every demon that comes against prayer, we break its power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We war. The scriptures I have today is Philippians 4, 6, which is the same one sis brought. <laughs> Hallelujah. Confirmation. So it says, do not be anxious about anything, right? We don't agree with demons of anxiety. We don't agree. 
in Jesus name. We bind them, we break their power and we command them to go. So here's another good thing about prayer that it, it gets rid of anxiety. Amen. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Amen. Let your requests be made known to God. Amen. And then the peace that surpasses all understanding will guard your mind and your heart. Hallelujah. So we pray, we can pray Thanksgiving, we can pray the word of God, we can pray to bear each other's burdens, right? We can pray um, uh, uh, for our children, we can pray for our, wor our workplace, um, there's, there's so many, we can pray the word of God, amen? We can, we can pray what the word of God says, amen? We can memorize scripture, pray scripture. And, and so prayer is powerful, right? Because not only are we denying ourselves, we're getting into uh, the secret place. We're being intimate with God, right? We're having pure and holy and, and wonderful thoughts with thanksgiving, praying the word. Then we're also having that power. We're being revived. We're being renewed. And it in prayer moves mountains, y'all in people's lives. It's powerful. I'm standing here today because of praying grandparents, praying dad, praying mom. Amen. And then my husband, I prayed for him. My parents prayed for him, right? A lot of us are standing here today because of prayer and the power of prayer. Amen. Amen. And so I decided this year, I'm going to start out and I'm going to begin to get into deep intercession and pray and fast like never before, like I've never done before. Amen. And there's a lot of benefits to that, right? And I'm going to especially do that for my family and my brothers and sisters in Christ, right? And the lost in my area and region, wherever the Holy Spirit leads me to pray. But I also thought by the end of the year, I am going to give God so much glory because I know that I'm going to see fruit from the prayers that I pray throughout this year. And I can't wait to see that fruit. Hallelujah. Right. Amen. So that's that's what God's calling me to do this year. And we're all in different seasons. So I would encourage you guys to ask what God's calling you to do this year. What you know, this is the beginning of the year where people are working out, trying to lose weight, you know, because it's it's like starting fresh, a new a new year. Right. Uh, people are getting gym memberships and well, what are we going to do spiritually? Right. That's the most important thing. And, and, and we can't even lose weight if we're not right spiritually, spiritually. That's that comes first. God comes first. We need to know what we're but what God wants us to do. We need to be able to be able to shift and move when God's telling us to. Right. We don't want to hold on to things and, and, and think, you know, this is and what I want, my will and, 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 and it not be God's right. We need to be able to shift and move. You know, we had some changes with our ministry recently. You know, we, we looked at some things and we were like, okay, we need to shift and move in this direction. What does that mean? We're not quite all sure yet, but we know God's saying this and we're going to do it. We need to be able to let go of things when it's time to let go. We need to be able to shift and to move by the spirit. Amen. And we, and we have people that we pray about it. We have confirmation, right? And then we get uh, confirmation from other people. We need to, to ask people what they think, right? People that God has put in our life that we know that we can trust, that'll tell us the truth, that won't lead us wrong, that'll pray about it, amen? That has wisdom and experience, right? And so we need to be able to shift and move as God, as God begins to lead and that we're guided, okay? Amen. So don't feel like, okay, I'm do, I've done this last year and this is what I've got to stay doing all the time. Or we, we got this and I don't want to let this go, right? We need to be able to let go, right? I even say that about um, items. Sometimes we get too attached to stuff too, right? And, and we, we shouldn't be, if, if we feel funny about like getting rid of something, we probably ought to get rid of it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like if there's some weird tied up emotion stuff to, to an object, we need to let go. <laughs> yeah. So even stuff like that, it, you know, let's clear out our closets for the secret place. Amen. And uh, spiritually, physically, and in every way, let's begin to just clear it all out, but get rid of what God wants us to get rid of and keep what God wants us to keep. Amen. Amen. And another beautiful thing about prayer that Sister Laquita talks about often um, is in the Bible, y'all remember Job and what happened to him, right? Well, y'all in Job 42, 10 through 17, it says when Job prayed for his friends, God restored his fortunes and gave him twice as much as he had before. Amen. It also said that the Lord blessed Job's latter part more than he did his beginning. Amen. And so let's pray for our friends. What a beautiful incentive. Anyway, we want to pray for them because we love them. 
right? But God blesses that. Isn't that a beautiful thing? Because then again, we're praying and we're denying ourselves. We're not praying, oh, I want this. I want that. I need, you know, it, it, we're, we're letting go of our needs and we're praying for what we know our friends need, right? Or our ministry partners, or our loved ones, or whatever it is. Amen. Isn't that a beautiful thing to bear each other's burdens, right? And what, what does one do? One puts a thousand to flight, but what does two do? It puts 10,000 to flight. Amen. So get a prayer partner. Amen. Get, you know, let the Lord lead you and pray about it and ask, okay? Because there's power in agreement, right? There's power in agreement. Prayers of faith and agreement. I love when we, we uh, hold each other's hands in a circle and pray. You know, the witches do that, right? They do do that. So we, because it's agreement and it's power, right? So we better be doing it, right? And they fast. We better be fasting. Amen. We need, we need to do better than what they do. Amen. Hallelujah. We break their power in the name of Jesus. We serve the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Amen. He's the Holy One of Israel. Hallelujah. Yahweh, Yeshua. Amen. The Ruach HaKadosh. Yeah, full of power and glory and majesty. And let's pray for the witches and the warlocks. Amen. Let's pray that they come to the Lord and they get healed for the pain in their heart from what's happened to them, the why they choose the darkness. Amen. Amen. We pray for them. We bless them. We pray that they are apprehended by the true Holy One of Israel. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. That's the heart. The Lord says, pray for your enemies. Amen. Yeah. Pray for those who, who abuse you and despite you and, yeah. and use you, right? We bless them. We forgive them. We love them. Help them, Lord. Help them, Lord. Isn't it good to have a loving heart? Amen. And a forgiving heart that comes from Jesus, right? Yes. Amen. He's good. He's a good God. Yep. I'm glad I serve him and I don't serve Satan anymore. Amen. Isn't that a good thing? Satan wanted me to die, right? And he didn't get me. Uh-uh. Yeah, hell lost another one and another one and another one. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, so we, we don't want anyone to go to hell, not even those who curse us, right? We don't even want them. We love them. We bless them. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let's pray for them too in our prayer in our secret places, right? And even if you're not called this year to pray, we always need to pray. Amen. Yeah, that should be at the forefront of everything. But I just, that's what I'm doing deeper, deeper. Amen. So I'm thankful for that. And so um, I have another scripture here and it is, um, you know, Galatians 6, 2, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Okay, that's part of the law of Christ for us to bear each other's burdens. Amen. We want to honor him. We want to obey him. We want to we want to pray and bear each other's burdens. Amen. So go and find some, you know, ask, talk to people at work, find out, you know, what they need prayer for. Right. And, and let's people at church, wherever you're at, wherever you're led, let's get a prayer list going. Write it down in your little journal and your Bible and just pray. Amen. And then see what God does. Just watch and praise him. Amen. And get all the benefits of intimacy with him in between. Right. Amen. Okay. Then we have uh, Ephesians 6, 18. Um, and oh, I was going to pull this up over here because I like the whole thing and I couldn't write it down. Okay. So this is good. This is right after all the armor and um, it's Ephesians 6, 18 through 20 praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Amen. And for me, that utterance may be given unto me. Okay. We may, we may be getting an utterance from the Holy Spirit when we're praying in the spirit. Amen. For the saints and that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Amen. We get knowledge and revelation in prayer, y'all. We get the utterance, right? We get that. It's beautiful. And then we can help other people and we can, we can share the mystery. We can speak boldly when we pray. And when, especially when we fast and pray, we get a boldness. Amen. It does help you when you fast and pray to get boldness. It really does. And to read the word. Amen. And to speak it out loud in power. Amen. And it makes the enemy tremble. Amen. The enemy doesn't want to be around you or in you. If you're fasting and praying and reading the word and speaking the word, it will make him miserable and his little demons. Amen. Amen. Let's let, let's not, let's make them uncomfortable, right? Like never before, right? That, so they don't want to be in our house, our temple or our house. Amen. Right. They don't want to be, -uh. and praise will, will hurt them. 
let's praise while we're doing all this praying too. Okay. Amen. And so then it says that it says to make known the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in bonds that there, and I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. Okay. Prayer, praying for the saints. We get utterances. We utter the, the mysteries of God. We get words of knowledge and revelations and downloads to further the kingdom of God. Amen. And then we get boldness because the Bible also says the righteous are as bold as lions. Amen. And we speak these scriptures out loud. Amen. And we do this in our prayer. We, we speak the scriptures to God too. We read the word. We sup with him. We commune with him. We eat the word like sis said. Amen. And her beautiful mother, we clothe our children, our friends, our family in the armor of God, and we pray for them and we remind them to pray too. Amen. Prayer is important. It's powerful. It's needed. Fasting is with it is even better. Amen. Ask the Lord. Ask the Lord, what do you want me to fast from? How do you want me to fast? Okay. Amen. And he'll tell you, and we can do all things through Christ who gives us the strength. Amen. Let's deny ourselves, pick up our cross and follow him so we can throw our crowns at his feet. Amen. Amen. I love you guys. I bless you in Jesus name. I break the power of the enemy in your lives. I bless you guys to walk out your deliverances and love, joy, and peace and, and wisdom and understanding and knowledge. I pray for protection over you from, from wolves and witches and warlocks and all the agents of Satan in Jesus name. And I pray for discernment on your lives and that God will guard your mind and your heart through Christ Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over you in Jesus name. God loves you. He wants to see you in your calling and in your destiny. And you know what? He'll do just that. You just listen to him, obey him and deny yourself and pray and read his word and fast in Jesus name. Amen. Well, bless the Lord. Powerful word. Yeah. Amen. That has gone forth. So I'm just going to tag on what everybody else has said. Is that okay? <laughs> All right. Praise the Lord. I'm just going to give you some steps because we have, um, this has been a wonderful week of prayer, healing, deliverance. So let me just give you some points to maintain and retain your deliverance, okay? And sis gave the end of the scripture. I'm going to give you the beginning of it. Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. Number one, you must put on the whole armor of God. In, in order to fight effectively, you got to keep the armor on, okay? So the, this is armor that God has given. It's in Ephesians 6, 10 through 18. There's seven pieces of the armor. Your loins must be girt about with truth. You must put on the breastplate of righteousness. Have your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The shield of faith. The helmet of salvation, which keeps your mind covered. The sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. We fight with God's word and then we pray in the spirit. Okay. When you guard your mind, you must guard your mind and your thought life. Most demons seek to re-enter will attack your thoughts. Refuse thoughts from the enemy and replace them with positive and spiritual thoughts. Fill yourself up with the word. And I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Fill your mind with the word daily. And uh, Philippians 4 and 8. It says that when you resist the devil, that's the wrong scripture in James. It says, when you submit to God, you can resist the devil. He will flee. I believe my sister read Philippians 4 and 8. Is that right? Isn't this, isn't this good? We did not know that we were going to do this. So let me read Philippians 4 and 8 again. Is that okay? All right. Philippians 4 and 8. Mm -hmm. It says, finally, brethren. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and any praise, think on these things. All right? Hallelujah. Okay. Number two, make positive confessions. Negative confessions characterize demonic influence. Positive confessions is faith expressed. That means you're speaking what the word says. You're speaking what God says, not what you say, not what the devil says. Okay. Confess what the word says, according to Mark 11 and 23. Number three, stay in the word. The word is a mirror, according to James 1. 22 through 25. The word is a lamp to our feet and it will guide us according to Psalm 119, 105. 
The word is a cleansing agent, according to Ephesians 5, 25, and 26. The word is a two-edged sword, according to Hebrews 4 and 12. About, and I'm going to read that scripture. Forgive me for not reading all of these, okay? If you write them down, you can go back to them or get the tape, okay? Hebrews 4, 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. The word is food for your spirit, according to 1 Peter 2 and 2. So we should desire the sincere milk of the word so that we may grow. You cannot maintain deliverance apart from God's word. And I'm going to read Psalm 1, 1 through 3. Many times people receive deliverance, but then it's not maintained or retained because they're not filling themselves up with the word of God and staying fresh the way God wants. So we got, we need the word of God. Psalm one, one through three, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Be careful of what you hear. I think brother said that be careful of what you take in, listen and allow the Holy spirit to give you discernment. When you hear something it may sound right, but if it don't match up with this word, throw it out. Throw it out. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. Verse 3. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Okay, number four, crucify the flesh. Take up your cross daily and follow after Jesus, according to Luke 9 and 23. Break old habit patterns set up in league with evil spirits. Now, the works of the flesh are in Galatians 5, 19 through 21. So if you find yourself falling into any of those works, get in the word of God, get in prayer. If you need prayer, get it from somebody if you need it, okay? But we have to learn to maintain our, on our own as well, okay? So we don't want to walk in the works of the flesh because that will open you up to demonic activity if you're not careful, okay? Number five, develop a life of continuous praise and power. I like what my sister said about getting into more prayer, interceding, praying, and fasting, because when you pray and fast, you know what happens? Your flesh gets crucified. You put it under, okay? Praise silences the enemy. Praise is an attitude of the heart. It is the expression to God of thank thankfulness, adoration, and joy by speaking, singing, shouting, dancing, leaping, clapping our hands. There are times that I've been in services where people begin, we begin to clap our hands and it's almost like the Lord just comes and sits and dwells because he's, he inhabits the praises of his people, but also it disrupts. The enemy don't like it. Come on here. Your hands are a weapon. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Your hands are a weapon. So when you clap your hands, you hiss God out of his place. He's going to come see about you. All right. Hallelujah. So you wonder why I say clap your hands? God come see about us. Okay. He will fight for you. Come on here. He will fight for us. Amen. <laughs> Let me say this, even when the devil comes sit in your midst, you don't have to be afraid. You set your face as a flint and obey God. Come on here. The Bible says you will not be ashamed and you will not be confounded or confused. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Number six, maintain a life of fellowship and spiritual ministry. Find and fulfill your function within the body of Christ. Keep yourself under authority. Stay pliable. Stay submitted to God. And even leadership, those that God put over us, we should stay in submission. And that submission is respect, not subservient. Come on. Amen. All right. No. And finally, commit yourself totally to Jesus Christ. Determine that every thought, word, and action will reflect the very nature of Christ. Abide in Christ that the fruit of the Spirit might come forth in abundance. Faith and trust in God is the greatest weapon against the enemy's lies. By doing these things, beloved, it will ensure that your house or your life is filled after having been cleansed. It is a spirit, if a spirit should trick you, regain entrance, see that he is cast out as soon as possible. Take authority over the enemy right away. Don't let anything fester. Get rid of it, okay? All right? If other areas of demonic activity in your life are brought to light, this is what you do. Seek deliverance. Get help. Get help. Don't be ashamed. Call somebody if you have to. Text someone. Pray for me. If all you can say is pray. Come on. Don't you know God goes to work right away? Come on here. This is why we need each other. Amen. Don't be ashamed. This morning we had to say some things. Don't be ashamed. And, and God will let you know who. Amen. You can't open up to everybody. So be careful. They may come smiling and may look like, oh, that's okay. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. The Bible says know them that labor among you. You got to know them by the spirit. Everybody that say Jesus ain't really seeking Jesus. That's another lesson. Amen. Give, give the Lord hand praise. I love you. God bless. Bless you, Lord. There was a great counsel. Every single one. Amen? Amen. You know, there's some measuring sticks in the word of God that you can look at to see how, how you're doing. One of them, I'm not, I'm not going to go into it other than telling you to look at 1 Corinthians 13 that says love is and love isn't. Faith works by love. Love never fails. Love covers uh, co covers a multitude of sin. You know, come on. Love conquers all. If your love walks off, you're weak. I'm, I promise you. Those people that we have to pray for that send fiery darts our way and those things that happen, if your love walks off, they'll get you. Promise. It's, it's, it, it is the measure. If God is love, then are we not supposed... Now, listen. I have told people that came to me prepared that I'm not even going to pray for you because my prayer would be wasted because you're shacking up. You know why I told them? Because I love them. I'm not condemning them. I've done it all. And if I hadn't done it all, by the grace of God, I didn't do it. But had I gone on and just prayed for them, knowing their condition, I would have left them in the wolf's den, the lion's den. I would have been leaving them in a place of destruction. Right? So love doesn't always look like everything's okay. You're okay. No, it, love looks like, let me help you pray. Let's get restored to the Lord. Let's kick those demons out and, 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 and let's go sin no more. And if you need help, here, what'd you say? Call somebody. Sometimes people are fragile and they need some help at some point, right? Right. But then, but then the ultimate thing, all of the prayer that somebody does for you and you do for them and that we do for each other and what we do in the body and the deliverance that we get and the healing that we get and the, all those things that we do and the word that we take in and all those things are preparation for the valley of decision in the moment when it's going to be you and your enemy 
and God, and you're going to choose God or your enemy. That's when the tempter comes. So, and that temptation isn't just necessarily let's go drink some and let's go drug some and let's go have sex some and let's go do that. Sometimes it's just, <laughs> are we going to be kind? Are we going to wake up grumpy or nice? <laughs> All right, because the enemy will play with your flesh. First Corinthians 13. Look at it. Be real. Use it as a mirror. How do I look, Lord? Am I puffed up? Am I bearing all? Am I provoking? If you're sarcastic, you're a provoker and you're sinning every time your words speak sarcasm. I'm telling you. Because a sarcastic word cuts. And it cuts. And, and it cuts. And even whole families have habits of that. So some, maybe I'm speaking to somebody here about that. There's whole habits of that, of being sarcastic. And it's usually followed by, I'm just kidding. But the just kidding part happens after it was funny for a while and then it hurt somebody. So are the words edified? Do the words build up? I mean, our words, I, I spoke it earlier uh, in, this, in, the, in the weekend here, your words matter, they're, they're death or life. And are my words, uh, Ephesians 4, 2, 9, it says, let your words bring grace to the hearer. Let no corrupt communication come out of her mouth, but let it bring grace to the hearer to bring edification, to build them up. Are we building up or tearing down? And then there's the Beatitudes. Blessed. How many want to be blessed? Or would you want to be cursed? <laughs> I want to be blessed. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You know what poor in spirit means? Humble. It blessed means the, the joy, the happiness, the a, a good life. But here's what the Lord says. For thus says the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him that is also of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. Poor in spirit. You know, I want you to hear, saints of God, that there's a fine line between being humble, okay, and not knowing you're a child of God. Because you, you, you humble yourself before this mighty and this holy one, but you accept the righteousness of God that he's given you, and you know that you're a child, and he's the glory and the lifter of your head. So you don't go around, listen, even after a failure, going, I'm a piece of trash, I'm a piece of trash, I'm a piece of come on. You humble yourself before God. Say, forgive me, Lord, I need you. Because what I'm doing doesn't look like you. <laughs> Amen? So we're, we're going to move along here quickly, but listen to me. Say, Father, forgive me, forgive me. For, every place. for every place. I've not been poor in spirit in the way that is holy. Can I present to you that it's prideful to hate yourself and not go to God and get cleansed. It's prideful and haughty and defiant to not accept that his blood is enough and to not be obedient to love yourself. Huh? It's pride and with another look. That, that We don't want that to be us, do we? Take a deep breath. Let him go. And as I'm speaking here on these things, all squatters, everybody that's your legal rights have been stripped, you just start coming on out of God's people. Everyone where they've repented before they even got here. And every place where they're living the life that God has called them to live, that Jehovah has said, and they've admitted, and they've been poor in spirit and said, God, help me, but there's squatters sticking around here. You go on and come out too. Come on, go, 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 go. In Yeshua's name, Jesus' holy name. Okay, blessed are those that mourn. I mean, there's a first place of mourning. It's called godly sorrow. Or do we not? Hey, listen, so you, you know you sin? Are you telling God you're sorry because you know you have to? <laughs> Are you telling God that you're sorry because you don't like the circumstances? Or do you really wish you hadn't sinned against this beautiful Savior of ours? Hmm? There's a big difference. It means blessed are those who mourn. 
And not that so that there's a place of mourning and lamenting our condition and being blessed because we know he's the answer. <laughs> huh? Yes, he does comfort. And in our suffering, this beautiful Bible of us, it gives both sides of the coin. We're blessed with God. We're going to suffer with Christ. You get both ends. But can I tell you that in the suffering, you grow more than in the blessing? Because in the suffering, you learn that the only answer is him. Many people in the blessing forget who blessed them. Say, Lord, don't let that be me. Say, Lord, forgive me in the places where I've mourned and not turned to you. See, that's the thing. There are people that get stuck mourning. Mourning what didn't happen. Mourning a failure there. Not just mourning other people that died. But mourning what you didn't do or mourning what should have happened or the woulda, shoulda, couldas. And you stay in mourning. You're stuck in that place and you never move forward in the life that the Lord has for you. Say, Lord, don't let that be me. And I break the power of all mourning. That's not blessed. That hasn't been given to you. Take a deep breath. Come on, let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Thank you, Father. Come on, come out of God's people. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Moses was called the meekest man on the earth. Whoa, Moses. I, I, I don't think anybody really pushed him over or anything. He was handling millions. <laughs> he was a prince of Egypt. But you know what? That meekness, he had everything the world could offer, and yet he humbled himself to go suffer with God's people and become the one that would take them out. And he was also the one that when God said, I'm going to wipe Israel out, he goes, don't take my name out of the book. You know, it takes boldness. But he was humbling himself at the expense of others, yeah. for, for others, right? At his expense for others. Say, Lord, forgive me anywhere I haven't been meek. I break the power of every spirit that's the opposite of meekness. Blessed are those which hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled. You want to be filled with the Spirit of God? Walk in His ways. Seek His righteousness. It's His righteousness. Look, He's made us righteous for His name's sake. But if I've been made righteous, why wouldn't I want to act righteously? So we go back and we look at ourselves. Lord, where am I walking in righteousness? Am I choosing sin? Am I not choosing sin? Now listen, all of us are going to have trouble. Nobody's perfect. The problem is if you have continual trouble in a given area and you don't go to God and say, let me get delivered to this, Lord. This doesn't look like you, right? Then you're back to the prideful, stubborn, defiant, and you bought a lie that said it'll never change. How many want to change? Okay. Say, Lord, forgive me for any besetting sin and any place I haven't sought your righteousness and been filled come on out of them lord let them go thank you i mean demons thank you lord lord i thank you that they're delivered of that in the name of jesus and i break the power of that that would twist words in yeshua's name take a deep breath come on go 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 unrighteousness go come on Come on, that that justifies unrighteousness. I break your power. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Y'all want to know who the easiest people to get deliverance are? The people that have been through a lot of deliverance. <laughs> they, he's, he's become the onions peel, 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 and they just want to be free, and they don't care. And so those demons also know they agree, so they start coming out of people. Amen. Amen? Blessed are the merciful, so, for they shall obtain mercy. Boy, if you want mercy, you better sow mercy. If you want to reap mercy, you have to sow mercy. So listen to this. The mother sought the great Napoleon for the pardon of her son. The emperor said that it was his second offense and justice demanded his death. She said, I don't ask for justice. I plead for mercy, cried the mother. 
when he does not deserve mercy. Well, she said, your majesty, it would not be mercy if he deserved it. <laughs> mercy is all I ask for. Well, then I will have mercy, and the young man's life was saved. If you're waiting to be merciful because somebody deserves it, that time will never come. You didn't deserve it. I didn't deserve it from the Lord, did we? But he gave it. Are you not glad? Let's be sowers of mercy where we can. Amen? Amen. Say, Lord, forgive me where I have demanded justice yeah. when you wanted to give mercy. Where I was self-righteous yeah. as if it couldn't have been me that did those things the others have done. I could have been doing what they did. I could have been doing what they did. Even unto, me. Even unto me. So I command so I every spirit of unmerc unmerciful spirits to go in Jesus' name. Take a deep breath. Come on. Let them go. Let them go. Thank you, Lord. Go. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. How many want to see God? You know what a pure in heart means? It means you want to do right. Simple as that. The Lord is just looking for agreement. He's looking for those that will say what he says is right and what he says is wrong is, is right and wrong. He's just wanting agreement. And so in our own lives, I always tell people, you've been given that righteousness, a robe of righteousness, garment of salvation. you got a beautiful white robe on. Why are you going to go jump a mud puddle? Why do it? Don't do it on purpose, but if you stumble into one, are you, you going to sit there and stay dirty or are you going to go to the cleaners? The cleaners is the blood. It's the Lord. It's Jesus. First John 1, 9, go confess your faults. How many want to be uh, blessed for being a peacemaker or cursed for being a troublemaker? And that's not peacekeeper, that's peacemaker. It means you attempt to make peace. That don't mean you compromise in sin just so everybody's happy. You get it? Blessed are the peacemakers, declares our Lord, for they shall be called the children of God. Who wants to be called the children of God? You know what that means? It means that we're reflecting him so we look like his sons and daughters. Amen? He says, great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Psalm 119.65, the only power that can bring true peace is the grace of Christ in the soul. When that grace is in the heart, it will drive out the evil passions and cause strife and dissension to go. It is only then that life, life's de deserts shall rejoice and blossom as the rose. Some guy, here's the deal, he asked somebody, if it would be wrong to learn the noble art of self-defense, a religiously inclined young man inquired of his pastor. He said, certainly not. I've learned it in youth myself. Listen, we're not advocates of karate or anything like that, okay? So there, there's a lot of spiritual roots to that we don't even want to touch, but hear me. Certainly not. I learned it in my youth myself, and I found it of great value. They must be European. So he says, indeed, sir, did you learn the old English system or the Sullivan system? I learned neither, said the minister. I learned the Solomon system. The Solomon system? Yeah, you'll find it in the first verse of the 15th chapter of Proverbs. It says, a soft answer turns away wrath. <laughs> That's the best self-defense you'll ever have. Don't overcome evil with evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen? I mean, somebody's telling you, your husband or wife, or there's something going on, they're going, well, you blah, 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 and you say you should remember look more beautiful than you do today. <laughs> Even when you're mad at me, you're still the prettiest thing I ever saw. Hmm? Something, something good, something kind. Amen? Say, Lord, forgive me for all the times I was a self-defender <laughs> and returned evil for evil instead of overcoming evil with good. 
and was a troublemaker instead of a peacemaker. I command those spirits, even self-defense and the rejection that came with it, that it was birthed from to go in Jesus' name. Take a deep breath. Come on, let them go. Let them go. All those squatters, come on out of there. In the name of Jesus. Now listen, here's where we're going. And we've all suffered some, but not like it can be, not like a lot of the people in the world suffer. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Jesus said, even is the student greater than the master. If the world hates you, hate me, they're going to hate you, right? But he said, be blessed. Peter said, don't count it all joy when there's fiery trials, right? It's working our faith. Say, Lord, forgive me for every time I grumbled and said, what's going on here when somebody persecuted me? just because I belong to you. You said it would happen, but you said be joyful. Forgive me for all my grumbling, and I break the power of every spirit that would make me a victim in any circumstance, and I command victim to go in Jesus' name. Take a deep breath for me. Come on, let him go. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So for checking out how we're doing, I gave you one, 1 Corinthians 13. All right? That was called the Beatitudes. It's Matthew 5, starting in 4, I believe. Yeah, Matthew 5. Matthew 5, 3. Look at them. Keep them as before you, as a mirror. Really? Rubber meets the road. I always tell people, uh, you can't judge how your walk is by your kumbaya. When we're all in harmony and we're all together and we all agree and we're all fighting the devil together, you judge how you're doing by when you have opposition. How do you react to the opposition, right? Amen. Say, Lord, help me. Lord, I give you permission to continue the work to the depth of what you want to so I can be molded and shaped into someone that is in the image of my Lord Jesus Christ. That my behavior looks like you would behave, Lord. That my choices are what you would choose. I want to be led by your spirit. And Lord, right now, I renounce all the rebellion. The rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. All the defiance, all the stubbornness. The stubbornness is iniquity and idolatry. I renounce self selfish in the name of Jesus and I command any and all remaining spirits ones I just renounced and anybody else whose legal rights have been stripped in my life and through this weekend to go now in Jesus name now, come on up and out, all you squatters. Let them go, 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 go. Come on, everybody. All you all you hidden ones, come on up and out now in the name of Jesus. Go, 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 go. The Lord rebuke you. Come on, go, 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 go. Self-justification. Come on, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. All the prideful spirits, all the defiant spirits, all the rebellion spirits, all the idolatrous spirits, all the stubborn spirits, all the stiff-necked spirits, and every disease 
bees that's come in because of these things. Let them go in the name of Jesus. Let them go who the sun sets free is free indeed. Thank you, Lord. One more big breath for me. Let's finish up. Come on, come on, come on. Let's stand up and be dismissed if you would. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good point. Say, Lord, forgive me for strife, which brings confusion, envy, and every evil work. I ask you to forgive me. I forgive those that have committed strife against me. And I break the power of strife, envy, confusion, and every evil work, and jealousy. In Jesus' name. Take another deep breath. Come on, let them go. Let them go. Come on. All that evil work. Get out. Get out. Get out. Envy. Confusion. Come on. Let them go. Come on. Jealousy. Come on. Go, 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 go. Fear of not having something. I break your power in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Do your work, Lord. We bless you and thank you for it. In Jesus' name. All right, let's just pray together. Father, thank you for all you've done. Thank you for all you're going to do. Thank you for choosing me. Thank you for loving me first. Thank you for sending Jesus. Jesus, thank you for dying for me. Choosing me. Thank you, Lord, that you now fight for me. You're my friend, my brother, my king, my lord, my savior, my champion, the strong right arm of the Lord. I can't do anything without you that has any value. But I acknowledge that you who are in me are greater than he who is in the world. So, Lord, help me in the days and times to come. Grant me daily wisdom, even moment by moment, so that I can make wise decisions. Help me to yield to your spirit. In Jesus' name. Father, thank you for your love and mercy and grace. Let me be a vessel that extends it to others. I ask it in Jesus' name. And thank you in advance. I pray right now for my brothers and sisters here, for my family, for the, for the body of Christ. I pray for the lost and even those that oppose me. In Jesus' name. Now I just pray a blessing over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Son, Yeshua's holy name, I pray that uh, you, you, you just outpour over them you surround them you woo them you love them you keep them that you brood over your people holy spirit i thank you father that they all come to realize that you are an ever-present help in time of need and all they need to do is call your name I thank you, Lord, that there'll be well, those that resist the works of the devil as they submit to you. And I also thank you, Father, that for those that need to, if they hear a voice in their head, they'll not only tell the enemy to shut up, but they'll say, Father, did you hear what he say to me? Lord, Lord, I'm asking you to get him and know that he will, because that's what you do, Lord. You help us. I pray, Father, that each person at each stage of their sanctification, Lord, that has come up a level in you from glory to glory. And I thank you for that continued work that you will not stop until the day of redemption. I bless all these and we thank you, Father, for safe travel in the name of Yeshua, that nobody will bump or be bumped. The road demons be rebuked and they have great fellowship with each other if they're traveling together and with you even traveling together, and if you, if they're going along. We thank you for it, Lord. We pray for those on the Zoom, those that are, that'll hear later. And we just thank you for all of them, Lord. And they are, they are equally your treasures. And we are honored. We bless Merrill and Miss Barbara. And we thank you for them and all the staff here at Lake Hamilton. In Jesus' name. Now, I want to uh, share with you now what uh, Merrill sent me a text. He said, it's so good to hear all of you. He said, 
everything I had to say, basically he heard the other speakers say earlier. But he said, tell the people to stay strong. 2024 is going to be a transition time for the church. Many things are going to happen. Be ready to stand firm. Pray and speak against the enemy every day in Jesus' name. I love you all so much and miss you all. God bless you. Amen. So be dismissed. Be be loved. But know that you're loved. Be holy because he's holy. And never give up because you're a winner if you don't quit. Amen. Amen. Amen.